Hey guys, today I'm going to actually be making a video to follow up with a video I made seven years ago. <laughs> or somewhere around there. I'm going to say seven years ago because I believe that's about right. Um, what it is, it's actually, this will be part two of that video series. I'll put a, a link to that video in the description of this video so you guys can go back and watch part one. But what this actually has to do with is if you have a micro moog or a multi moog, and as you can see, I've got the multi moog. The multi moog, for those that don't know, is just expanded micro moog. It has an extra oscillator, has after touch control with a pressure bar. Really nice. One of my favorites. Um, but on the micro moog and multi moog, you've got a very strange jack. And it says it's called modulation. You can see it right there. And it's a weird size. You can't just go plug a normal quarter inch jack into it or plug. It takes a .206. TRS, which stands for Tilt Ring Sleeve, and uh, it takes one of these jacks, which I'll put uh, parts in the description below, or you can watch part one where I actually show you what part or number this is. So it has to be a TRS, not a TS. Uh, TS would be Tilt and Sleeve. TRS is Tilt Ring Sleeve, for those that don't know what TRS and TS stand for. But it's a point two oh six. So that's what you'll need for the micro moog or multi moog uh, plug-in and then what we've got we've got that going to a TRS quarter inch right here and what I've done here this is where we're going to kind of uh, get into something new here so this is a box I've built and what it does it actually allows you uh, first of all what the modulation jack does is it ties into the modulation bus of your micro moog or multi moog and so it'll actually send LFO out and it's attenuated by the wheel meaning that the signal that actually comes off this modulation bus is actually controlled or attenuated by the mod wheel so you won't have any modulation output when the wheels down as you bring it up you'll have the same response as you have within the unit so that's how that works on the same note though is you have a modulation output so this is where you get a TRS jack. So one of these is input, one of these is output. And so what you can also do is route the modulation in of another synth into your micro moog or multi moog. And it's pretty simple to build. This is a real simple one. I've got a more complex one I'm actually going to be building. But what it is, is actually just you'll need a TRS female, a TS uh, female, for, uh, it's just a mono jack for those that don't uh, go by TS. This will be a stereo jack, this will be a mono jack. Then what you need is you need a make and break mono jack. And what that means is that when you, the signal of this jack will actually be connected to this jack until you plug something in this jack and it actually breaks that signal and then sends the external signal through this wire here into the micro mode or multi. That's how that works. So it's real simple. Just a real simple box, but uh, let me hook, let me put my camera on the tripod. I'll just kind of show you how this sounds. So what I'm actually going to be using my MFB Dominion One as a controller as well as a in, an instrument that's going to be receiving modulation from the micro moog. So let me put this back on my tripod here, and what I'll do, I'll get this plugged all back up here. So we'll go modulation, and we'll go to the micro moog here in this jack. And then what we're going to do, we're actually going to go, so uh, VCO1CV will be coming, will actually be, uh, be affected by the macro. So we'll actually plug that into mod output. So there's mod out. So now if we hit a note on this synth, I'm going to adjust the wheel. Let's see, I'm actually going to see if I can... Well, I can't show you here, but I'm going to adjust the modulation wheel of the um, multi moog, and you actually hear modulation from the multi moog affect the uh, Dominion One. Like that. So at the same time, though, we have them. We have this sense we can. And what I'm going to plug in modulation input here on this box, and that's actually routed to the ADSR1 of this synth. So what that'll do, will make this thing sustain for me. Close that filter up. We got 
this right into the let me actually get this right quick so we've got the modulation bus routed to the filter so when I hit a note here you can hear the filter of the uh, multi being affected by ADSR1 Unplug that, plug that into LFO2. As you can hear, we can change what we want to route that to. As you can hear how that works and at the same time we've still got the modulation routed output this little box works. Now one thing I'll be adding to a more complex one is an attenuator built in where you can actually attenuate uh, the amount of signal coming from an external sense. So as you can hear like the pulse width I, I can't control the range of that pulse width. It's just going to be whatever the synth you know has. Um, if you had a Mogra Fogra CP251 you could use an attenuator a bit to actually uh, attenuate that signal to what you wanted. And in some sense, I know some modulars have attenuators built in as well where you can actually adjust the amount uh, for external signal. But this is just a real simple one. Like I say, this is just a real simple box I'm building. But I uh, just thought I'd share that with you guys for the, uh, those that might be interested in building one of these things yourself. Um, it's real, pretty easy to build if you have soldering skills. And you can really just use a box, whatever kind of box you'd want. I got this one off eBay uh, a couple of years ago. It was just too small for my other project I had planned on using for it. But uh, anyways, once again, I can kind of show you how that looks inside. You can see the jacks and the plugs going into it there. And that's how it works. So like I say, when you plug modulation in, if you unplug that, now you're going to have routing back through your, your synth here, as you can hear. But anytime you plug something in, it's actually going to break the bus of the modulation circuit and then allow it to inject external LFO signals into the micro, the micro mode or multi mode. So that's how that works. But uh, anyways guys, just thought you might enjoy seeing uh, this kind of little mod for those that might have a micro mode or multi mode and want to kind of expand on what you can do with it. A handy little kit there. And uh, like I say, these things are real easy to build and uh, I think uh, it'll just be a cool little kit for you. But uh, anyways, take care guys and there will be more to come here very soon.